Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to my Minecraft world. Today we're finally taking a look at another redstone base on PC. This one is going to be super epic. It is a volcano redstone house and as you guys can see right in front of me, the volcano looks glorious. It is built on an island for that extra layer of protection. We have a lot of water around us and inside of Volcano, we actually have the base, which is just jam packed with amazing redstone creations, such as hidden rooms, a vault, realistic elevators, different secret code inputs, and just a lot of awesome stuff that you guys will enjoy. It's definitely an amazing base. So let's see if we can take one second to crush that like button for this base and other bases in the future. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are on the map. We're gonna fly up to the top of Volcano where we could find the entrance. Now the entrance itself is kind of hidden and it's located right in this position. Now of course, when you're playing custom maps, you normally play on adventure mode so you can't really break blocks. So this is where the entrance is located and to actually open up that entrance, we're gonna grab ourselves any item of our choice. For me, it's going to be an obsidian block and it's drop it onto this iron block right there and what it's going to do is suck it down and then open up our piston door, which we could walk through and enter our base. So let's go ahead and do that a little bit faster since we do need to um, get through that door before it closes. So as you guys can see, we got through it pretty quick and now we're inside of our base and we can begin our exploration. So right off the bat, we have a button over here, which is basically going to allow us to exit our base the way we came in. Then we walk down our staircase past our glass window, which gives us a lovely view of the outside. Those white circles are just there because of the shaders I'm using, but if you're just playing with different shaders, you won't even see that. But this is really cool, and we have a lot of these windows located across the base itself. Now as we walk down the staircase, you guys will notice that we have a lot of stone, obsidian, and lava mixed into the decoration and the design of the base itself. I think that's really cool because you want to feel like you're actually inside of a volcano redstone house. So as we walk down the staircase, we're going to come across our first redstone creation. This is going to be an area where we have our exploration gear. So you basically flick that lever, it's going to open up a simple piston door and expose our gold slash iron armor. And it looks really, really awesome, especially with these shaders. And you can just use that armor to explore the rest of the base. So let's go ahead and actually grab that armor and then put it on so we could um you know check out the entire base so I'm in creative mode so it's kind of tricky let's place the armor back down there and just grab a copy close that door and put the armor on our body so now as you guys can see if we um, change into third person I now have my exploration gear on and we're gonna use this to check out all of the other awesome redstone continuing down the hall we could go deeper into the volcano base or left into our observatory let's check out the observatory in here we have several different plant species including bushes trees fungi floral species and dead ones which we could use for testing and experimentation now to the left we have ourselves a very large window which makes this room the observatory it's sort of like a 180 view of this side of the volcano pretty cool and if you have a yet again different type of shaders you will be able to see the outside better let's like zoom in as you guys can see we can see the island surrounding the actual volcano as well as this is yet again one of many windows located in the base now inside this area, we have some bookcases as well as a computer and a brewing stand just to show that it is sort of like an observatory slash laboratory. But in this corner, we have a hidden room. We basically step on this block, flick that lever, and then we sort of like enter this underground area. Inside this area, we have loads of awesome and powerful gear, which you would basically use for an emergency or if someone's attacking your base, you have this hidden area which they can't get to. Now, as you guys can see, we do have ourselves diamond, a diamond sword as well as diamond tools. And we also have an armor stand swapper right in front of us. And as you can see, we have iron armor currently, but if you hit that button on the wall, it would switch to our diamond armor. And then it could also switch to our gold armor and you could basically put any type of armor you want on the actual armor stands you could put you know like special hazmat suits or something if you want to role play with that but i think it's really cool that you have three different outfit choices so yeah that's pretty awesome and then we could just step on that slime block hit that button and get launched back up to the observatory then we flick that lever and the uh, area is hidden once again you can of course add in a hidden input if you don't want the lever there if you guys are wondering 
since that e area is sort of easy to find since there's a lever located right next to it. Either way, let's uh, continue down the volcano itself and take a look at the rest of the base. On the left hand side we have the automatic smeltery and this is basically where you're going to be cooking all of your items. And if you come over here, as you guys can see, we have the fuel storage chest, which basically allows us to store our four different types of fuel. We have our wood logs, we have our charcoal, our coal, as well as our lava. And as you guys know, we can burn any wood item as fuel for Minecraft. But let's go ahead and grab ourselves a bunch of coal here. There's a full stack of coal. And also we need to grab some smeltable and cookable items. Now what we're going to do is grab some raw pork chops, some raw muttons, as well as some iron ore and some gold ore and just drop that into our smeltable chest. So just drop a couple of iron ore into that, a couple of gold, like one or two raw muttons, then we have like one pork chop and once that's in the smeltables chest, we go into the fuel and drop our fuel. And as you guys can see, the fuel will be automatically entered in there, but for the smeltables and to actually start the process up, we will need to flick that lever. And once that lever is flicked, it will start filtering those smeltables into our um, furnaces at the bottom, which will then kind of cook up or smelt the items and then dispense them in the finished chest. So there's five iron ingots in here, but as you guys can see, another additional iron, iron ingot was just smelted along with two, two more, and now we have three iron ingots and four. So as you guys can see, it does really cook and smelt the items very quickly. So currently we have six iron ingots in there. I believe that's from a previous time I inputted iron ingots. So that's probably why it's um, giving us so much iron. But yeah, it's sort of like a really cool system where you can just enter all of your fuel and all of the items you want to cook and just forget about it and come back later and just pick it up. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at the next room just across from it, which is going to be our wheat farm. We also have a light switch on the outside, which is just going to just control some small lighting for this area. And just take a look at this place, guys. It looks really, really cool. And we have a lot of these like awesome paintings and decorations across the house. Okay, so in the wheat farm, we could walk in and basically take a look at the wheat farm. And this is essentially just going to be an area where we could flick that lever and harvest the crops. It's going to unleash some water and that water should break the wheat, carrying all of the seeds as well as the wheat into that uh, hopper at the bottom. And once it goes down there, we'll basically collect it inside of this chest. So as you guys can see, we have some seeds as well as some wheat inside of the chest. And there is a minor problem with this since the water itself is pushing all of the items to the left side. Maybe if you download the map, you could go ahead and extend the hopper system one more to the left and that will fix the problem because it's kind of weird that the system doesn't actually push it into the hopper. But you can always jump down and just collect it manually. Either way, let's um, go and take a look at the rest of the map because we still have a lot of cool redstone creations and a lot of them are located, a lot of the best ones are located deeper inside the actual structure since there's more space to build. On this side, we have a ventilation area. This is pretty much going to be a spot where the lava inside of the volcano is used as a way to steam things. I guess maybe trap your enemies in here and they steam to death, but either way, let's go ahead and take a look at this in detail. We have the actual lava at the bottom. We have some cobwebs and decorations sort of in this ventilation tube and this tube actually goes all the way up to the top of volcanoes and as you guys can see there's sort of like emissions gas emissions coming out of that chimney so it's sort of a way to i guess heat up the interior of the actual volcano even though i mean it's a volcano it's really hot in here but if you go ahead and flick that lever and stop talking as you guys can see when the top closes it actually spawns down a bunch of particles which gives a really cool effect of the area being jam-packed with a lot of heat and steam and that's really cool and definitely an awesome feature on this map now continuing on this side we have a storage area as well as a hidden area located somewhere over here as you guys can see we have several different armor stands yet again. These aren't armor stand swappers, but they're still pretty cool to have nonetheless. And we have sort of basic armor on here, not really too powerful like the diamond or expensive like the gold armor. And like it said, this is a storage area with a window, by the way, so we can see out this particular side of the volcano, a lot of different chests for storage. And the chests aren't actually how we're going to get into our hidden area. It's located right at the back over here. So as you guys can see, there's a button. We're gonna hit that button and then it's going to open up a piston door. We then go down the ladder and then hit this button to close that piston door, hiding the area. Very simple piston door there. It's just like hidden beneath the hay. 
Then we walk down our staircase into this lovely decorated hallway. Come over here, hit this button, and it's going to open up a hidden nether portal. Now, of course, you can just have a regular nether portal down here, but the main reason for having a hidden nether portal is because when the portal is created, it does give off a specific sound effect. So using that sound effect, someone can easily know that there's a hidden room down here. But since we have this like buildable or sort of like hidden nether portal, they won't be able to find it. And you can just hit that button whenever you need to go back into the portal. So yeah, it's pretty cool and I quite like it. And it fits really snugly into the space on the volcano. Now let's go back up to the top by hitting that button and just jumping up and coming back over here and hitting that button to close the area. Okay, some pretty cool stuff. Let's continue down the volcano uh, past this section. Now, as you guys can see, we do have like a lava lake located right at the direct center. And there's sort of different rooms built around that lava lake, which I really, really love. So as you guys can see, we're going to just continue down here, walking past the lava lake and then walking past another lovely window very large windows. If you weren't using any shaders and you weren't using like um, any sort of texture pack, you would be able to see through this pretty well. Okay, so continuing down here, we have another area for decoration. Yet again, another window and also a better view of that lava lake. There was a hidden room beneath it, but we had to go ahead and remove that in order to kind of continue building down. All right, continuing forward, we have another room on the left side over here. This is basically going to be a bedroom. We have two beds and some minor decorations. The place looks really cool. And we have yet again, another large window, this time looking towards uh, that specific direction, which we have not seen inside of the volcano yet. It looks like a normal room, but there is a hidden space inside of here. And we get to that space by walking behind our painting and then going down the ladder into this spot. Now, basically what you have to do is go ahead and grab yourselves a nether star and put the nether star into the dropper. This is basically going to be a key card reader and there's the nether star inside the chest there. But once you have the nether star in the dropper, you hit that button, it's going to light up and it's going to open up the hidden room at the top. So just going behind the painting isn't actually the hidden room. We have several different mechanisms in order to actually open up this hidden vault, which is uh, located right on the corner. We walk through and we have a sword that's sort of like hanging on a post. I have no idea how this is done, but there's a sign over here that says do not touch because if you touch it, you're going to pick it up and then you're going to ruin it. But yeah, that is our sword. It looks really, really awesome and one of the best things to be hidden inside the vault. We also have blocks of um, diamond, emeralds and gold and then some chests over here filled with emeralds and then some like oak leaves to decorate the actual chest on the inside. I've never actually seen that before. And then we have a bunch of gold items such as gold ingots, golden apples and golden carrots. And then over here we have some oak leaves with some different diamond blocks, ores and regular diamonds. So yeah, it's a really awesome vault. It's quite compact and like I mentioned, it's really amazing that all of this fits inside the top of this volcano, which is absolutely tiny. Now in order to actually close that, you need to go back down into this area and then hit that button again. And you have to hit the button with the actual nether star on the inside. And then you grab the nether star and then you just like hide it or something around your map. You can also remove this sign if you don't want to show them which item you need for the key. That's just for you when you download the map. Anyways, let's walk up over here and take a look at the rest of the base. There's still a lot more to look at. We're still going down our staircase here and then we're going to pass this decoration, which I think looks pretty cool. It's sort of like a floral area mixed with some lava and um, it's surprising that's not setting anything on fire, but either way, we're walking forward here into our realistic elevator. If you guys watch my channel or have been watching my channel for quite some time, you know that this is a very popular design and I use it in almost every one of my builds because it's just so awesome. We're going to step here onto our glowstone blocks. Then we're going to hit that button. As you guys will notice, the actual doors will close much like a realistic elevator, which is why we call it that. And then the lift moves down and then the doors open up at the bottom. Now, if I hit that button again, you guys will see that the, the doors will close at the bottom and then the doors will open up at the top. So that's really why I love it. And uh, let's just step out here and hit that button to show you guys that the bottom door is in fact closing because that's very important. A lot of elevators don't have those closing door mechanisms. Now, as you guys can see, the bottom area of the elevator looks pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and turn around and enter this space. Inside this area, we have two different farms. On the left-hand side, we have an automatic sugarcane farm. And basically what this is, is just sugarcane growing 
on our sand and then we have to hit this button in order to harvest it so i guess it's really not automatic it's sort of manual not sure why that sign is there but this is actually located right beneath the lava lake and there was a hidden room here previously but we uh, switched it out i guess for the sugar cane farm and it doesn't it all doesn't land inside the water so this is kind of ineffective the farms on this map is really not that great but if you guys have any other um, ideas for redstone creations to add to the map, what's cool about this is that if you guys notice, the creations are actually added inside of doorways. So what you could do is actually destroy everything behind the door and add in your own creation and it would still make the map, it will still like work in the map if you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Either way, on this side we have an automatic uh, cocoa bean farm and we hit this button over here to harvest, it basically shakes the tree and then we can walk around and pick up all the cocoa beans and then we can just place it back onto the tree for it to grow. So that's basically our two farms. We're gonna continue here until we find or see this lovely map of our island. That is the volcano. And then that's the surrounding area. We have a lot of water surrounding us so no mobs or enemies will be able to cross without a fight. And we're gonna continue down the staircase and down into this area which looks really cool. I love these like uh what do you call it lava waterfalls like that is part of the wall because it just looks really really awesome and yet again makes you feel like you're inside of a volcano instead of just hiding that fact there's yet again another one of those staircases which takes us even deeper into the volcano a much smaller version of those lava waterfalls and then this is going to pick back up with some decorations in this hallway and a few different redstone creations now the first one on this side is going to be an infinite flower dye farm and if you guys don't know when he puts flowers in front of a dispenser with bone meal it will automatically spawn down flowers when the dispenser is activated so over here we have a few different flowers and to create our um, infinite flower supply we would basically flick that button and as you guys can see it's going to create tons and tons of flour using bone meal so this is really awesome and if we just keep that on for a couple of seconds and just go ahead and turn that off you can see how much flowers this actually gives us so Look at that, only a couple seconds and we have 52 of each of the flowers. I don't think this is actually working because um, I didn't get any of these particular flowers. But either way, we could then use this to create our dyes. So if you place on a crafting table here, enter the crafting table and place down our rose bushes, we could then shift and click and get over two, over one and a half stacks of rose dye from just a couple of seconds of using this machine. I mean, that is really cool and you could pretty much dye everything that you find that is dyeable. Now, walking down over here, we have ourselves a hidden enchantment table as well as a library. This library is very, very lovely. It's the decorations, it's really cool. And we're just gonna like fly around here to show you guys that. We have a lot of different paintings. We have ceiling lights as well as just a lot of bookcases, obviously, since it's a library. You guys will notice that we have the square on the floor, and that's basically where our hidden enchantment table is going to be located. Now, since you guys already know that there's a hidden enchantment table there, I didn't bother to like switch it to hide it in the floor. I think it's just I think it just looks really cool and it just saves it's sort of like used as a space saver instead of using it as like the secret like contraption but either way to activate that hidden enchantment table you come back over here to the corner hit that button and then it will basically pull out all the blocks from under us and create a hidden enchantment table in the floor and this is actually a really complex design the redstone takes up almost this entire area but it's worth it because you get to enchant your items to the max level. So if you go down over here with a diamond sword, as you guys can see, we can enchant from seven to 30 levels in just one space. And we have a diamond sword now with smite four and knock back two. And then to close this area, we come back over here, hit that button, and then it will start building back the floor. So that is just really awesome. It's a re really complex design compared to other regular enchantment tables, which just push up bookcases from the floor. So I really like that, but let's continue and take a look at another hidden area, which is located right over here. This is going to be a hidden storage area. And to actually open that up, we're going to come back over here and flick that lever right over there. Flick that lever and opens up a slime block door, kind of pulls it down into the ground. And we have a bunch of different chests here for storage, which you could use to store valuable items such as diamonds and swords, which have smite for and knock back too. Pretty cool stuff. And then to close it, you just come back over here and then hit that lever and boom, the door is now closed yet again. And we can continue 
down even more into our base. Now to get to the very bottom of our base, we're actually going to have to jump onto the slime block launch pads. And when we're falling, I'm basically just going to hold shift and I'm gonna fall down into that pad, taking absolutely no damage. I know I'm on creative, but I'm just telling you that guys that if you're on survival mode, you will take no damage. We have another waddle fall, fall right in front of us along with some other decorations. We jump down onto the second pad past these decorations and then finally onto the last pad into the bottom of our base. Now straight in front of us as you guys can see we have the heart of the volcano which I think is a very awesome design for this map just to just signify that we do have the volcano as an important part of the base. Then we have some lovely decorations sort of surrounding this area with skylights made out of lava. So a lot of the light coming from this area is from the lava itself. I mean, there's a few torches around as well as lights in the ground, but I really love the fact that lava is so like well implemented into the map itself. Now we have two different sections of this area, one on the left, one on the right, depending on um, which direction you're looking, and they include different redstone creations. Yet again, we do have different doorways which have the redstone creations behind them. So if you download the map, you could easily go ahead and sort of replace the redstone creations with either something better or something that you prefer. So it's a really, really awesome map that you could customize and personalize if you so choose. Now on this side of the map, I'm going to switch into survival mode to better demonstrate what is uh, happening here because there is a trap and over here we have ourselves a very secure vault it's like an ultimate vault system with two different doors two different code key code uh, code inputs key code inputs there you go I was sort of messing up there but we have uh, two different inputs and two different doors which is going to lead us into our vault and to enter our vault we're basically just going to enter the first key combination which uses levers there's six different levers as you guys can see we flick the left one over here that's uh, the one key that you have to pay attention to and then the one without the key marks at the bottom you don't flick and then on this side you flick these two and as you guys can see we'll open up our three by three door leaving that um, bar or iron bar in the very center and then we walk into our other room which this time we have a different type of passcode lock input and this is basically going to be buttons we have six different buttons and in order to open up that door we have to hit this button over here and then these two and then it'll open up our doorway and then we walk through into our obsidian vault this is going to be extremely well protected obviously we need to be playing in adventure mode for this to actually work properly but even if you're playing in survival mode this will definitely slow your enemies down now inside our vault we have ourselves some diamond gold and iron as you guys can see our chest is just filled with those particular items and it could add anything that you want on the inside but this is actually coming really close to the edge of the volcano that's why i really couldn't add a very large space most of the space was taken up by the actual entrances themselves but in order to close our vault door we're just going to hit that button to reset the combination and then we're going to walk back to the first room and flick that lever to close the door obviously when you download the map you will destroy all of these signs and no one would know the passcode combination and yeah that's our really cool like ultimate vault system now on this side we have a very similar looking system but this is sort of like a trap as an extra layer of security for that system so it's like an extension and also i didn't know what to build down here because we had a lot of space and i i added um all that I could think of and the top section of the volcano but either way over here we basically step onto this area and when we flick this lever nothing really happens but if someone manages to come over here and flick one of these levers you do get to kind of hit with a potion of harming as well as poison and if they kind of continue to flick these levers they will be damaged even more but they have to be turned off and on in order for them to work so it's not really a great system but it's just something that I wanted to add down there's an extra layer of security for the extension of the vault and yet again I really didn't know what else to add. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other side of this bottom area. There's another lava decoration and on this side we have ourselves a cooking area. Now this basically uses a redstone creation where you drop your item onto our sizzling grill and then it outputs our cooked item from that dropper. Now in order to do this we're going to grab ourselves some cookable items. So I'm going to grab some raw mutton along with some raw rabbit and then throw our raw mutton onto the grill. And then it should get sucked in. Let's go ahead and try that again. And as you guys can see, it got sucked into our grill. And there's basically just a hopper right over there that basically takes it. So let's drop down our rabbits. And then once it goes into our 
grill, it will get sucked down into a system and then output in a dropper like I mentioned. And as you guys can see while I was talking, we now have ourselves some cooked mutton as well as we are going to have some cut rabbit, which we can num 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 down on. And you can actually turn this grill off by right clicking on that button. As you guys can see, now the grill is off and if you th try to throw down any items into the grill, it will not work. So as you guys can see, it's not going to work. And then we can come over here and turn this off as well. Now with the actual creation, it's supposed to be able to turn on and off, but for some reason there is a minor glitch with this particular version of Minecraft that I'm using. So it might work in other versions, but this is 1.11 and I'm using like mods and stuff. But what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to turn back on. But if it can't turn back on, you just walk through the door, destroy that bit of redstone dust and then replace it. And it should go ahead and reset the system, essentially turning it back on. So as you guys can see, we now have the system out here back on and that's indicated by the um, you know on grill which is basically a powered rail and that's really cool because it actually shows that the grill is hot and working I really love that particular design and as you guys can see I could drop down some more raw mutton in there and we'll go down if we uh, try again there you go and that will start cooking up once again now if you walk across the hallway we have another awesome redstone creation this is basically going to be a item sorting room and i try to put the most essential items the best items i can in the sorting system since we had limited amounts of space and i put the items that we all usually collect over time in minecraft that we would like to sort out i have our gold ore as well as iron ore we have some different food items such as wheat apples carrots we have fuel such as coal we have two different types of meats the most common which is pork and beef as well as we do have redstone dust since anyone who loves a redstone base like this will be collecting a lot of redstone dust we have arrows and bones from skeletons and different mobs that we kill and then we have a junk chest which is going to collect a bunch of random items now there's currently items in here but let's go ahead and empty this chest and take a look at some of the different sorting mechanics on our own. I'm gonna empty all the chests, that way you guys know that it indeed works. There's seven beef in there, there's one coal, six carrots, uh, 17 apples, nine iron, and then two gold. Okay, so what we're going to do is just re-enter all these items into our input chest. We have two gold, nine iron, 17 apples, six carrots, and then you guys could just uh, see the rest. There you go. Let's just enter all of these items randomly. We could even enter the cooked items that we just got from our uh, machine over here. And let's grab that mutton and put it back into our system. And it's going to sort through all of that item, all of those items, and put them into their respective chests. So as you guys can see, we all of our gold is currently in there, all of our iron. We have all of our apples already there. And it's a very fast system. We have six carrots. Looks like we have all of the different raw foods, our wheat, our redstone, it's not in there yet, but we do have our arrows, our bones, and our junk chest is already filled up. So I don't actually think we put any redstone in there. Or, oh, uh, there you go, there's actually five redstone. Okay, so there is our redstone and all of our items is now completely sorted. And let's check our input chest, there is nothing. So there you go, that is basically our item sorting system. And there's the essential items that you would need, but you could expand it even more into different parts of the map, but this is sort of like the edge of the volcano, so you'll have to build it in a different direction. So guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's Redstone House Showcase. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to take one second to crush that like button. Tell me which was your favorite part of the base in the comment section down below. And you can also suggest ideas for other builds that you'd like to see. And then you can also subscribe to be the first to see when I post those new maps in the future, so be sure to do that. But either way, this was Twist, and I'll see you guys next time.